In this video, we'll be covering topics from Pierce Genetics chapter 16.1 and 16.2. Regulation of gene expression may start at the compact level of DNA, where DNA is highly condensed. As you learned in chapter 11, chromatin is a highly condensed structure consisting of a molecule of DNA wrapped around multiple histone proteins. Well, during the mitotic phase, the entire chromosome stays highly condensed. During interphase, certain parts of the chromosome with chromatin known as euchromatin will actually remodel to undergo repair or to undergo transcription. Chromatin remodeling complexes will move histones around and reshape the chromatin so as to expose areas that need to undergo transcription. These locations of transcriptionally active euchromatin are also referred to as DNase-1 hypersensitive sites. DNase-1 hypersensitivity means that an enzyme, DNase-1, which is a DNA digesting enzyme, can easily bind and cleave DNA at one of these hypersensitivity sites, meaning that the DNA is highly exposed because it's remodeled for transcription. And thus, DNase 1 can be used to tag transcriptionally active regions of eukaryotic chromosomes. In addition to actually moving the physical positioning of histones along a molecule of chromatin, we can also change the polarity of the histone tails and thus change the affinity of DNA for the histone proteins that it's wrapped around. Recall that DNA has a net negative charge because of the negatively charged phosphate groups in its sugar phosphate backbone. And remember that histone proteins have a strong association to DNA molecules because of the positively charged histone tails, which contains large amounts of lysine and arginine, which are positively charged amino acid residues. So with this histone octamer as an example right here, if we acetylated this histone using histone acetyltransferase, or HAT, we would increase transcription because we are decreasing the affinity of the DNA for this histone protein. So we're making this DNA looser and we're making this DNA freer. It makes it easier for our transcription factors to bind and it makes it easier for us to assemble our basal transcriptional apparatus because there's less stuff just in the way. So it makes it easier for us to undergo transcription if we acetylate our histone tails. So again, if we acetylate histone tails using histone acetyltransferase, we're gonna increase transcription. However, if we deacetylate it using histone deacetylase or HDAC or HDAC, we're going to decrease transcription because we're going to be winding our DNA even tighter around our histone octamer. In addition to histone acetylation and deacetylation for gene regulation, we can also do histone methylation. The enzymes responsible for histone methylation and demethylation are HMT or histone methyltransferase and HDM or histone demethylase. Now, unlike histone acetylation, where it's pretty predictable, where if we acetylate, we increase transcription, or we deacetylate, we decrease transcription, with histone methylation or demethylation, it kind of depends. It depends on the gene, it depends on the region of the chromatin, everything depends. So if we do this, transcription might go up or might go down. If we do this, transcription might go up or down. So methylate, who knows? Demethylate, who knows? It depends on the gene, it depends on the context, and it depends on the other corroborating factors that are happening. So next to this, we'll put in parentheses a little bit of a question mark. Because it's not that we necessarily don't know, it's just that we can't blanketly say methylation increases or decreases, or demethylation increases or decreases. It depends. Unlike histone methylation, we know that DNA methylation is always going to decrease transcription. The reason being is that DNA binding proteins, such as transcription factors, have very specific DNA binding domains. And those DNA binding domains have very specific affinities for the DNA. Thus, if we methylate the DNA, we're going to change the affinity of that protein to bind onto that DNA, so it's going to be harder for it to bind, so it's going to decrease transcription. DNA methylation happens at sites near the promoter called CPG islands. CPG islands denotes that we have cytosine, a phosphate, and then a guanine in series. And remember that if we have cytosine phosphate guanine, because DNA is complementary and anti-parallel, on the complementary strand we would have C, P, G in the other direction going from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. In these CPG islands, we will always methylate the cytosines. DNA methylation at CPG islands occurs via an enzyme called DNA methyltransferase. DNA methyltransferase uses a cofactor called S adenosylmethionine, or SAM, which is a methyl group donor. And a methylated cytosine is called a 5-methyl cytosine because we're putting a methyl group onto the fifth carbon of the pyrimidine ring. 5-methyl cytosine is going to decrease the affinity of a transcription factor to bind to the specific region of DNA. And thus, when we have CPG islands near a promoter, if these are methylated by DNA methyltransferase, we're going to decrease transcription. However, if we have a methylated area and we need to transcribe that gene, we may recruit DNA demethylases, which remove these methyl groups from carbon-5 of cytosine, which gives us regular cytosine, which allows our DNA-binding proteins to bind and allows us to resume transcription of that gene. 
I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.